are here at Gathering Place in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and joining me today is Stacy Martin, who is the Director of Horticulture and Operations. Stacy, thank you so much for having us today. Yeah, it's thank you. a beautiful park, and there's so much going on. Tell us a little bit about the horticulture aspect of it. Yeah, so many people may have been to Gathering Place for some of our amazing playgrounds and some of our amazing events, but we actually have a really awesome landscape as well. Um, is designed to be wild, replica of some of Oklahoma's native ecosystems, and has very sustainable perennial displays. Starting in Adventure Play, one of the, our most popular areas, we have 300 trees that are original to this property that we spent a good amount of time figuring out how to preserve and how to protect and how to maintain their health. We then planted 6,000 additional trees. And as gardeners, we all love trees. We love the shade they provide. We love the ecosystems and the birds that the trees support. Um, and we also really love like the water, stormwater benefits and carbon sequestration. Absolutely. And so, I mean, trees are just one aspect of the whole yeah. ecosystem that you've created here. So behind us is the kind of the native area too? Yes, behind us we've got Peggy's Pond okay. and we've got our wetland gardens. Okay. Our wetland gardens is a way for the pond water to cycle through the gardens and filter out some of the pollution. We got a lot of uh, red winged, blackbirds mm -hmm. and we got a lot, get a lot of herons around here and when you're at the pond one of the most popular activities is to feed the fish. So uh, tell us a little bit too as we venture further in because this is kind of up at the entrance mm -hmm. as we venture further into the park I know it sort of represents the ecology of the whole state. Yep. How has that played out? So if you've driven down Riverside you've seen some of our wildflowers. We have 16 acres of prairie. We've got short grass prairie, we've got tall grass prairie, and you know monarchs were recently declared endangered by the IUCN so we're always planting milkweed. We can't wait to see our monarch migration come through in September and October. That's awesome. Um, some other areas you know for your more traditional garden spaces, your more color displays, one of my favorite places to visit is Sky Garden. Sky Garden has a number of different plants. They're always something in color. It overlooks the Arkansas River and all of the species are perennial. So it's a really beautiful place. So it's a really great place to come as a gardener and kind yeah. of see what I need to plant in my garden to keep that season going throughout yes, the year. Yes, exactly. It's a great place to come and learn about different species. We have over 400 species here. So um, there's something new for everybody. And I know there's also an area that kind of represents southeastern Oklahoma. Tell us oh, a little yeah. bit about that. We have this pine palm area that replicates some of the pine palm gulch in southeastern Oklahoma. One of the most cold hardy palms is from McCurtain County mm -hmm. and we have those underneath some of our loblolly pines. Yep. So it's really like you're in another world almost. <laughs> it absolutely feels like that when you're walking through here. You can travel the state in one yep. day. Yep. How long do you think a person should kind of plan to be here if they're just walking through the park? I'd say a couple of hours, even if you're not planning on the playgrounds because you can go to the different areas of the park you can stop in the boathouse, you can stop in the lodge and kind of take the cooling off time or um, warming up time yes. in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> and you get a really different vista and a di different view from all of those areas as well. Well, and there's actually a lot of topography, right? Mm -hmm. So we're right now kind of low on the lake here, yep. um, but you can get high up onto some oversights and things like that. It's, there's a lot of geography, topography, yeah. and then also just the um, materials that are used in the design, the rocks and the wood. Tell us a little bit about all of that. So the site was originally flat. And so the landscape architect worked really hard to create some interesting areas. And I'm telling you, the hills are one of the most popular play elements for some of the kids as well. People love running up and down the hills, but we've got these rolling lawn areas. We have this garden called Four Seasons, which is a rock garden and it's got rock columns. And that's really a replica of like Chandler Park. Yeah, there's a lot of that exposed rock. And I don't know a gardener that doesn't also appreciate rock in right, the garden Right, right, well. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so definitely you've got a lot of wildlife that kind of comes in here with the birds <laughs> and the insects and, and the people too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we really um, take big efforts to kind of maintain that as well. 
for example, during the winter, we, um, we stagger our cutbacks. So our prairies don't all get cut back at the same time because we want to provide habitat for some of the native pollinators, the native insects, the native bees, um, even so much as the cattails. Our staff prefers to cut them back when it's still warm out. Okay. And I definitely agree that it is much nicer then. <laughs> um, but we do leave select areas up because it's such good habitat to have that diversity. That's important. Yeah. And, and I know as a gardener that comes here, they're probably gonna ask, what's the favorite time to come or the best season? Is there a best season? I don't know. <laughs> like I'm still learning that every season has become my favorite because fall, we have such wonderful fall color uh -huh. um, and we've got all of the fall nectar plants in bloom. So, and you do have that monarch migration come through. It's a really spectacular time. But once like May and June hit, all the wildflowers are in bloom and that's 16 acres, wow. you know, of lush green wild. So that in itself is spectacular. You know, summer is just so nice to be outside and we've got all of those summer blooming plants. Um, so really you can't go wrong. All right, well, where can people find more information, not only about the horticulture, but just all the other events that are going on. You have boat rentals at oh, different yes. times of years yep. and, and all the other stuff. We have boat rentals um, in September and October. And I'd find more of that on the website. Definitely check it before you come. You can learn more about specific hours for activities and you can learn more about the parking and events that we have going on. Okay. It's also a great resource because we have a self-guided horticulture tour. We have a tutorial flower guide and we have a blog that I update as often as possible. Okay, <laughs> and best part, admission to just get in here it's free. It's free. <laughs> yep, exactly. So come enjoy the 400 species, come learn something new um, and experience the park in a different way than you may have expected. You can beat it. Thank yeah. you so much, Stacey. Appreciate you joining us. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.